Hello and welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to go over for loops and for each loops. So loops in general are just an important concept in programming because anytime we want to repeat a certain segment of code, X amount of times, more than likely we are using some type of loop. Now in VBA, there's more than just two types of loops. There's actually a couple, but in today's video, we're going to cover just two. We're going to cover the for each loop and the for loop, sometimes called for next loop. So we're going to break it into two sections. I'm going to talk about the syntax first, and then we'll run through some examples, and then we'll go on to the next type of loop. So the first one, a for loop. So with a for loop, the basic syntax is as follows. It always starts out with the for keyword. And then we have a couple parameters or arguments, whatever you want to call them, that we have to pass through into our for statement. The first one is the counter argument. So this really is a variable and it's the counter variable. And this will house the number that we're going to basically loop through. And so we have to initialize that variable to the starting point of our loop. So it could be one, it could be 20, it could be whatever it is. It's just got to be some kind of integer that we can put in there. And so that will be our starting point. And then we've got to specify our ending point. So we got to say, okay, start the loop here and keep going until you reach the end of your loop. And so in other words, it's going to keep evaluating this condition of whether this variable equals this end variable. And once it does, once it does, then our loop stops. We can also specify another optional parameter, and that's called the step parameter. And so with this one, we can specify how many steps we want to take in, in between our loops. So for example, we don't have to go one, two, three, four, five. We can go one, three, five. So in other words, we don't have to go in consecutive order. We can actually specify the steps that we want to take in between our numbers. That comes in handy if we don't want to actually loop through every single number. And then finally, to close off our loop, we have the next keyword, and then we can also pass through the counter variable. Now, this is technically optional. You don't have to pass it through, but you can. Uh, well, it's more really for for each loops, but you know, in this framework, we have a next, and then we have a counter variable that we can pass through. And then also we have the statements that we want to basically loop through. So we have a certain amount of statements that we want to execute X number of times, and that belongs to the inside of our for loop. So let's get started with some examples. We're going to run through just a basic one. The first one is we're going to go from for I equals one to 10. So I, that's our counter variable. So this one, one is our start point, And then 10 is our end point. And then down here, I'm specifying, go to the next counter. And really what this is going to keep doing is it's going to keep repeating itself until the condition evaluates to 10. So once it reaches 10, then it will stop because now we've reached the end of our loop. And so all this is doing is it's going to go, it's going to manipulate a particular cell in column one, and it's going to set that value equal to the counter. So for example, in column one, it's going to go to the first cell then the second cell, the third cell, and so on until it reaches 10. So this value right here will change on each loop. So really, we're going to loop through a range of cells. We're going to loop through this range of cells and simply set the value equal to the counter. So if I run this, we can see it's 1 through 10. So just like we were expecting. So that's a basic for loop. Let's take it a little bit further and we'll incorporate a step. So with this one, we're not going to go one, two, three. We're going to go one, three, five, and so on. And then we're going to set the value of the cells in column two equal to the counter that we are on in our loop. So when we run this one, it's one, three, five, seven, and nine. So just like we were expecting, we specified to take two steps, not just one initial step. And this is now going to be one, three, and so on. So the cell that we're working with is dynamically changing because it's referencing the counter in our loop. Now, we don't actually have to go in, you know, one, two, three. We don't have to go in, I guess that would be forward or order or whatever you want to call it. We can actually go in reverse order. 
Now how we do that is we take our ending and make that our starting point, and then we take our starting and make that our ending point, and then with our step, we just simply specify a negative number because that means go backwards. So if I run this one now, I'm gonna actually loop through it or walk through it. So it's gonna be 10, 9, 8, 7, you know, and so on. So as you can see, it's now going in reverse order. You can also have nested loops. So with this one, we have a loop inside of a loop. So really all it's gonna do is it's gonna go from column one to row 12 to 16. So this little section right here, it's gonna set the value equal to 100. And then it's gonna go to column two, 12 to 16, and set those values equal to 100. And then finally, it's gonna go to column three and go to, from rows 12 to 16 and set those values equal to 100. So I'll step through it again. As you can see, it's changing it. And that's really just a nested for loop. So it's a loop with inside of our loop. We can use this all the time. It does come in handy, especially when we're working with cells. Now, we don't actually have to go to the ending value in our loop. So what we can do is we can incorporate an exit for keyword. And what that is gonna do is if a particular condition is met, then it's gonna exit the loop. Now, you don't have to have a condition in here, but then it's just gonna execute automatically. We want to have a condition in here because we only want to exit that loop if a particular condition is met. Well, what I'm specifying here is loop from 1 to 20, but if the counter equals 10, simply exit the for loop. So don't finish, don't go to 20. And all this is going to do is it's going to print the values that I have right here, the 1 to 20, it's going to print it down in the immediate window. So if I run this, I can see that it went from 1 to 10, but once it reached 10, that condition was met, so it exit the for loop. So that's for loops. Let's move on to for each loops. I'm gonna delete that. So with a for each loop, it's structured kind of the same, but in this example, we now have a group of objects, and each object in that group is considered an element. And so all we're doing is we're looping through each element that belongs to that group. Now, a lot of times we'll, we'll work with collections because collections are just a group of similar objects. And one of the most common things we want to do is we usually like to loop through uh, the worksheets in a particular workbook. And so that's what I've done here. I've created a for each loop. And all it's going to do is it's going to loop through each worksheet in the active workbook dot worksheets collection. Well, we know the worksheets collection is just a group of all the worksheets in a particular workbook, and all this is gonna do is it's gonna loop through all of those worksheets, and it's gonna print out the name in the immediate window down here. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. So if I run it, I can now see that each name of the worksheet, sheet one, my sheet, and sheet three, are now in here. So just like I was expecting. Now, we can also have an exit for within our for each loop. So in this example, it's going to loop through each worksheet in my workbook. However, if the worksheet name equals my sheet, it will exit the for loop. So if I run this, it went sheet one, and then it got to my sheet. It realized that this condition was met, and so it exit the for loop. And so it didn't put in sheet three. Now, this is just to demonstrate that we don't have to have this worksheet here, so I can actually remove that. And so if I run this one, it operates exactly the same, sheet one and my sheet. So all I did is I, re I removed the worksheet and it still operated just as I was expecting. Now, you can also have nested for each loops. Not surprising, right? Well, in this example, I'm gonna loop through all the worksheets in this workbook and then I'm gonna specify a range within that worksheet, and then I'm gonna loop through each cell in that range and then simply set the cell value equal to 100. So nothing too complicated, but it's to demonstrate that you can have a for each loop within another for each loop. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, here I'm specifying this workbook, that is referring to the workbook that houses this code. So if you have this in your personal macro workbook, it will not work. So you have to make sure you have this in the workbook that you're currently 
working in uh, because this workbook is referring to the code that is housing, um, sorry, it's referring to the workbook that is housing this code. So what this is gonna do, if I run it, is it's gonna take A1 to B2 and simply set the value equal to 100. So it went to sheet one, my sheet, and sheet three. So just like we were expecting. So that is how we build a nested for each loop. Other than that, that does it for today's video. If you have any questions about for loops or for each loops, please put them down in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. This is an important concept, so if you have questions, you know, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get notifications as we release new videos on different topics. I am hoping to start uh, a new series soon on Python. It's a very popular topic. We're gonna first run through some API stuff and then uh, we'll go into the more complicated stuff, but definitely excited to do that one. I think it's gonna be fun. But yeah, thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.